Hello, welcome to Back to Oz, right on your sofa. I'm Davy Maguire, and today I'm going to be reading That Pesky Rat by Lauren Child. This is me. I'm the one with a pointy nose and beady eyes. That cutesy one in the middle. I live in dustbin number three, Grubby Alley. Every now and again, I come back to find someone has emptied all my belongings into a big van and driven off with them. It's very upsetting. I'm a brown rat, but people call me that pesky rat. I don't know why. They say I smell, but that's not my fault. It's the dirt. Sometimes, when I'm tucked into my crisp packet, I look up at the cosy windows and wonder what it would be like to live with creature comforts. To belong to somebody. To be an actual pet. Most of all, I would like to have a name instead of just that pesky rat. My friend Pierre, who is a chinchilla, is looked after by a rich lady called Madame Fifi. He has a very glamorous life. He lives in the lap of luxury. I say, I would like to live in a fashionable apartment and be fed chocolates while I sit on a feather cushion. Pierre says, It's not all cushions and chocolates. Madame Fifi has me shampoos at the pet parlor once a week. <laughs> I hate having baths, and I think I'm allergic to soap. Then, there's this Siamese cat called Oscar. He lives with Mr. Washington, a busy businessman. Mr. Washington is always at work, so he doesn't have the time to wash fur or be strict. If I lived there, I could do whatever I liked. Oscar says, Doing whatever you want can get tiring after a while. I sometimes get a bit bored watching the same old TV shows. I even have to get my own supper. I'm quite good in the kitchen, but I hate to be bored. A lop-eared rabbit I know called Nibbles works in a circus with Mr. Hoopla. It must be so exciting. Never a dull moment. Swinging on the trapeze one minute, tiptoeing on the high wire the next. Nibble says, It's fun hooping through hoops in a tutu, but sometimes I could do with taking off the clown's nose and putting my feet up. Maybe it's all a bit nerve-wracking for me. I think I'd quite like one of those owners who do lots of sitting about, like Miss Sinclair. Her Scotty dog, Andrew, is always sitting by the fire, having supper on a tray, and they spend the evening doing puzzles together. Andrew says, Oh, on the whole, I feel very well looked after, and Miss Sinclair is good company, but rather embarrassing when I go out shopping. Miss Sinclair makes Andrew wear a little hat and coat. I don't think clothes would suit me, but I would do anything to be someone's pet. So in the morning, I go to the pet shop and ask Mrs. Trill if she has an owner who might want me. She says, Oh, there isn't much call for brown rats, I'm afraid, and you aren't very popular with the public. I say, I don't see why not. I'm very good company and always popping up when you least expect me to and I am happy to eat anything, even if it's been slightly nibbled. Miss Trill says, Well, you could always make a notice and put it in the window. You never know. So I write, Brown Rat looking for a kindly owner with an interest in cheese. Hobbies include nibbling and chewing, would like a collar with my name on, would like a name, 
would prefer no baths, will wear a jumper if pushed. Yours keenly, brown rat. Bracket, that pesky rat. P.S. Sorry about the bad poor writing. Then I'll wait. And I'll wait. And I'll wait. Until. On Tuesday, old Mr. Fortescue is passing and he stops to look at my notice. He has to really squint because he has such bad eyesight. Then he looks at me and says, My, haven't you got a pointy nose? And goodness me, what a long tail with such unusual beady eyes. I'll take him. I can't believe my luck. Nor can Mrs. Trill. Mrs. Trill says, Oh, are you sure? And Mr. Fortescue says, Oh yes, I've been looking for a brown cat as nice as this for ages. Mrs. Trill looks at me and I look at Mrs. Trill and we both look at my notice. But neither of us says a word. I just love being a pet and I'm trying to be really helpful and I pick out the best cheeses by using my excellent sniffing nose. I clean the kitchen by nibbling up the crumbs. I help Mr. Fortescue cross the road by scaring the other traffic. And I'm always there when he comes home. So here I am, finally a pet with a name. So what if I have to wear a little jumper? Mr. Fortescue says, Oh well, Tiddles, who's a pretty kitty cat? And I squeak, I am. Thanks very much for listening and remember to tune in next Monday for another bedtime story.